we will describe the image of why we need a band band CDR in a service owing to its robust operation. However, because of the high demand for extremely high speed service data transmission, most people begin to use the Muller Muller CDR instead of the band band CDR at high speed service. Therefore, in this video, we are showing you why you may need a Muller Muller CDR in a high speed service. Let's review the band band CDR operation image. The goal of the band band CDR is simplicity by providing only binary plus one or minus one information over lay or early clock phase. As shown in the band band transfer curve image, the output voltage should be plus one to speed up the VCO if the output clock phase is late, or the phase error of the clock minus data is positive and vice versa. Since we need to know if the clock is early or late in a simple way, we must make use of the transition sample T as a baseline criterion from the waveform image. Obviously, the transition sample T embeds the clock transition information. Then we should have one half UI sample lead and lag the transition sample T, which is called A and B data samples. If the clock phase is earlier, then both data sample A and the transition sample T would have the same sign, but different priority from the data sample B. On the other hand, if the clock phase is later, then both the data sample B and the transition sample T would have the same sign, but different from the data transport A. Therefore, an XOR for the A and T may provide the late clock information to push the VCO run faster, and another XOR for the T and B may provide the early clock information to push the VCO run slower for a clock phase correction. After checking all the band band CDR waveform images, could you please think about the band band CDR impairment images for 5 seconds? Correct. The sample image shows you that the band band CDR requires two samples in one unit interval one for the data sample and the other for the transition sample. For example, for 10 gigabit per second data transmission series, your band band CDR is 20 gigabit per second. Therefore, the band band CDR is also called 2x oversampling CDR. The obvious impairment image is the CVF power due to the 2x oversampling event, which may show you at least two times power at the CDR. What are the circuit impairment images of a 2x oversampling CDR? Bingo! The two times oversample system implies every circuit image is doubled. First, you must have two sets of sampler for the data sample and transition sample. You may not only need twice the power on the samplers, but the sampler's input capacitive loading also limits the bandwidth of the CTOE and the DFE's summing amplifier. As the data rate demand pushed to 112 gigabit per second over 224 gigabit per second, not only the power is the bottleneck in the advanced thin fed process, but also the design challenges of providing good continuous time frequency response and crossing the decision feedback timing are big challenge in the data path. How are the clocks? Can you think about the image of the clock generation and distribution for 5 seconds? Right, the 2 times over sample system also implies the clocking image is double. First, in a four-way CDR, your VCO must generate two phase clocks for a data sample and transition sample, respectively. In addition, 
you must distribute the two phase clocks from the VCO all the way to the sample input. You may not only at least double the clock's power, but also face the clock phase mismatch during the multi phase generations and distributions. The phase mismatch between the data and transition clocking would impact the jitter and bit array performance of the service system. Since the band band CDR tracks the transition samples and sample the data by assuming the data phase is perfectly 90 degrees away from the transition. If the data phase is not 90 degrees away, then not only the tracking jitter is higher, but the data sample speed array will be also higher. Again, I'm not saying those impairments cannot be mitigated to make the 2x oversampling CDR robust. But that may other demands to make it less attractive. Think about the multi-level data transmission images for 5 seconds. Correct, as we discussed in the white pen for service video, the data rate up to 200 gigabit per second could be too high to increase the channel loss at such a high next rate. To mitigate the high speed and long reach requirements, pen for data transmission is a must. But in the white pen for service video, we realize that the pen for I degrees much worse than the NRZ I with because of a multiple crossover effect, even with ideal conditions shown here. For example, the NRZ's single crossover makes the determinist jitter near zero across the reference level. But the PEMFOR's multi crossovers cause the non zero determinist jitter as shown here, even though the transition is very sharp. If the data transition is getting slow, the jitter or I width would degrade much quicker in the PEMFOR. Think about how the PEMFOR's I width because of a multiple crossover images would impact the band band CDR's jitter performance for 5 seconds. Bingo! The painful synchronous images show you that you can go to any of the 4 levels in the next voltage level or data symbol from the current level that would lead to different transitions such as a major transition from plus 1 to minus 1, minor transitions, and intermediate transitions shown here. For an analog approach painful series, we must have the threshold at the midpoint between those levels. So we could have a transition sample at the midpoint levels, but we must only use the right output of the sample that's sampling here, along with the right transition. In other words, if we use the wrong output of that sample at the bottom while the top transition happens, then the wrong transition sample output will push the CDR away from the ideal lag phase while you use the right output of the top sample. Since the band band CDR is very sensitive to the painful transition between data, you must apply data filtering to avoid the jitter degradation from data pattern dependency. Again, the data filtering is assumed to have the right decision in the data sample. If there's any error propagation from the DFE, the band band CDR jitter may cause a higher bit array. The bit array and data filtering for the band band CDR is a chicken and egg problem. If we change the ANC based pen for service with the band band CDR, what could we do? Think about the ADC images for 5 seconds. Right, the ADC based pen for service is the most robust system, since we could calibrate easy all the circuit impairments in the digital domain. Therefore, most of the industrial 
painful studies up to 224 gigabit per second in mass production are implemented in the ADC based approach. Unfortunately, if the ADC based painful studies may require 28 giga sample per second and 8 bit ADC, then 2x oversampling CDR would push the ADC speed to be 56 giga sample per second instead of 28 giga sample per second. The band band CDR would indeed add lots of power and design overhead into the ADC or even the whole pen for series instead of the band band CDR itself. So what can we do? Can you think about the fundamental sampling images for 5 seconds? Correct. The fundamental issue is a 2x sampling per UI, and we could try Bowray 1x sampling per UI CDR to reduce all the overheads. Muller Muller proposed the original Bowray CDR also applied in ADC based design in 1976. So we may also call the Bowray sample CDR as Muller Muller CDR. The Bowray would not have overhead, but there is no transition information. What can we do? Think about the past response images for 5 seconds. Bingo! Since the Moodle Moodle CDR only takes one sample per bit, we can take the advantage of the past response through the channel by equalizing the precursor ISI of the channel with the post cursor ISI of the channel. All the data of the precursor, main cursor, and post cursor are available through the Bowray sampling. Therefore, if the pass response was symmetric, the sampling point of the main cursor would be in the middle and the best face. If the precursor is smaller than the post cursor, then the clock is too early, and vice versa. The clock phase is too late. Therefore, the Muller Muller CDR concept of the lock condition or criteria is very simple and straightforward. But there are still a few variants of the circuit implementation images because of its several uh, impairments. Here are the summarized image of why we may need a Muller Muller CDR in high speed studies up to 200 gigabit per second. The band band CDR is simple and robust, owing to both available data and transition samples. However, both available data and transition samples also create a 2x oversampling or two samples in one unit interval overhead in power and design complexity. For high speed such as 56 gigabit per second to 224 gigabit per second data transmission, we not only need a painful service in a long reach, but also require an ADC based topology to provide robust data transmission over PPT and mass production. Therefore, the band band CDR 2x oversampling may not have too many overheads itself, but also push too much power and design overheads in the LAC. So the Bowery one simple per UI CDR is becoming more attractive nowadays in ADC based painful studies to reduce all the overheads. Muller Muller proposed the original Bowery CDR in 1976 and their simple concept was to take the advantage of the pulse response through the channel by equalizing the precursor ISI of the channel with the post cursor ISI of the channel. In other words, if the pulse response was symmetric, the sample position of the main cursor would be in the middle and the best phase. If the precursor is smaller than the post cursor, then the clock is too early, and vice versa, the clock phase is too late. 
please be advised that there are still a few variants of the circuit implementation images for the Muller Muller CDR to mitigate its several impairments. We will discuss other Muller Muller CDR variants later if anyone has further interest. Thanks for watching. Before you go, if you are benefiting from those circuit images, I would love to hear your feedback and place your comments down below. Lastly, please share the video link with the people who may be benefiting from it.